الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أمروا إلا ليعبدوا الله مخلصين له الدين صدق الله مولانا العظيم Respected ulama, my elders, jama'ah, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our nourisher and our sustainer and our maintainer and our creator, and the choicest peace, blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his companions and upon his family, and on all those who strive to emulate and live his lifestyle till the end of time. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we glorify Him and we praise Him for this ni'mah of Iman and Islam. And it is our constant dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps us in a state of submission, keeps us in a state of healthy Iman. That when we see our last moments, it is moments that is embellished with Iman and that when we are resurrected, this Iman will be a source of our Jannah and everlasting bliss through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before I start, let me first welcome back our ulama, Maulana Mu'adh, Sheikh Ihsan from the Umrah trip. They are jet-lagged, but here, yeah, nevertheless, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them both Umratul Maqbula, inshallah, for them and their families, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all their a'mal and all their du'as that they made for everyone of us, I'm sure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause you and all of us to return many, many times. Ameen, inshallah. Islam means voluntary surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The surrender is not in part. The surrender or the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is required is a complete one. It is whole. It is a whole and a complete surrender and a submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, A'udhu billahi min shaytan al-rajim, Udkhulu fi silm kaffah. That enter into the way, into the religion, enter into it completely. Meaning enter into the whole and enter it with your whole, not in part. And one of the stages of surrendering, one of the stages of your Islam is to do obedient acts of worship. To be obedient unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to respond to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regard to ibadah. So one has to condition oneself to be in a state of Islam, to be a Muslim. One has to condition oneself to be obedient to those clear injunctions, those clear commands with respect to ibadah with respect to those acts of worship which we sometimes know as, as the ritualistic acts of worship our salah for example our zakah for example the siyam, the hajj failing to do so failing to submit failing in the stage of submission it is a serious crime it is a serious crime and it implies that one has either misunderstood the meaning of Islam or it implies that one has chosen to become stubborn. One has chosen to become stubborn in relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands. And stubbornness is the courier of kufr like we know. Because out of stubbornness 
And stubbornness itself generates argument. It generates argument not to want to comply with the command and with the injunction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this stubbornness and this refusal to be obedient slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, slowly and slowly it makes an argument for rejecting the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And such a person is in fear of reaching the point of complete rejection. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that. So completing the required acts of worship, completing all acts of ibadah, it means that one has started walking the path of Islam. You are performing your salah, you are giving your zakah, you are performing all your ritualistic acts. You are trying to do it with ikhlas. You are trying to be true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and true to yourself. You are striving for sincerity in those acts. Then one has started walking the path of Islam. Now we have only started walking the path of Islam. We have started understanding what it means to surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how? Or rather, know rather that the path is a long path. The path of submission is not at a specific time or at a specific place. The path of submission is a continual path. It is a continuous journey. And know also that there is a lot to learn with regard to being a Muslim and submitting and surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And know also that this path of Islam and submission is full of challenges. It is full of obstacles and it is full of challenges that the Muslim has to overcome. So Islam and submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then we understand from that is not only ritualistic it is not only then performing your ibadah best case scenario we are all in this masjid we are all people who do our ibadah best case scenario but this doesn't mean that we are we are completely submissive to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is a certain time and there is a certain place for ritual there is a certain manner and there is a certain type of attitude, a certain type of inward uh, cleansing that you need to have. But for those who are starting to understand Islam, the ritualistic acts, they might think the ritualistic act in itself to be the challenge. They might think that to perform salah, that is the challenge. Or to fast in the month of Ramadan, that that in itself is the difficulty. Or to actually go for Hajj, there, therein lies the challenge and therein lies the difficulty. Or to take out from your zakah and to pay it, that therein lies the challenge and therein lies the difficulty. While in truth, the acts of worship are there. And while it might be difficult for some, they are there and they are there to prepare one for the more difficult challenges that lie ahead. Because life is fraught with challenges. And our acts of worship, our ibadah, it is there actually to fortify you. It is there as a weapon. It is there to prepare you for the challenges. That is not the challenge in itself. That is the preparation. That is the training. We hear this word training in relation to the month of Ramadan. But this word training applies to all of the other acts of worship as well. Salah is a training. Zakah is a training. Your Hajj is a training. All of these are training experiences within themselves. To do what? To prepare us for what is out there. To prepare us for in between. What happens in between one salah and another salah? What happens in between one Jumu'ah and another Jumu'ah? 
What happens in between one Ramadan and another Ramadan? What happened in between there? This is important. Islam is not only about the ibadah or the acts of worship, but Islam is about what happens in between. So submission lies also then, and surrender, voluntary surrender, lies also in that space. The Prophet wasallam he advised the companions when they returned from the battle, very famous quotation, very famous hadith of the Prophet wasallam that when they return from the battle, that they have completed the great or the, the lesser jihad, and they have returned to the greater jihad. They were, they were physically and, and financially committed to a struggle. The Prophet said, you have complied physically, you have complied financially, but you are coming back. And what is waiting for you here? There it was clear. It was clear who the enemy is. It was clear what and who you are fighting against. But you are coming back now. And you are coming back to a greater jihad. And that jihad is a jihad of the nafs. That's the jihad we make in our daily life. The challenge of the self. The striving of the self. Because the best arguments are made by oneself. The best arguments. So Islam is also surrender when you are not engaged in a ritualistic act of worship. And according to the hadith, it seems that submitting in general, outside of your ritualistic acts, is as or even more important, subhanAllah. Some people are deluded in believing that because you are fulfilling the acts of worship, that they qualify as good people on the whole. So, because you are performing your salah and because you are doing X, Y and Z, that is visible, they, they come to the conclusion that they are good people. They come to the conclusion that they are people of Islam. That they are people of surrender and people of submission. While the Prophet ﷺ taught us, that people will come on the day of Qiyamah and they will bring A'mal and when this A'mal is presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when the rewards will be dished out it, and when further investigation will be made it will be found but you swore this one and you ill-treated that one and you were argumentative or you beat that other one and now, in other hadith we learn that even the person who engaged in jihad, the person who recites the Qur'an, the khatib or the alim who, who learned a lot of knowledge, even they, for what deemed to be outward acts of ibadah, even they will be then further interrogated as to the batin, as to what motivated them for that action. So, so no, no, it doesn't make you a good Muslim just because you are outwardly practicing the deen. It doesn't make us good because Islam is not just about that practice. Like we have said, and I reiterate, Islam is much more than that. It is true that the, that the first thing that will be weighed is the salah. The first thing that is going to be weighed on the day of Qiyamah, it is the salah. You will be rewarded for that. And thereafter, whoever done an atom's weight of good, you will see it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow it to manifest. But know, know this, and this is an important piece of information, that some of these credits that you will have on your account, you will have to give it off. You will have to give it off to the person 
who is coming to lay claim, who is coming to stake a claim against you because of some attitude that you had had with that person, some argument that you oppressed the person in, some manner in which you ill-treated the person, whether that person is close to you like your wife or children or parents, or whether that person was a complete stranger unto you. And for some people, their hasanat will be taken to the extent that they have no more hasanat left to give. They have no more good left. And then what will happen? Then from there, the, act, the bad acts of that person will be laden on this person. The details of this you have heard in previous Jumu'ah. So subhanallah, we need to do what? We need to submit completely and entirely inside of our ibadah and in the spaces in between completely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu reminded us that ma min shayin athqalu fi mizan al mu'min there is nothing more heavier that goes into the scale of a believer on the day of Qiyamah min husn al khuluq than having a good manner good mannerisms good behavior good character however we want to translate it being good there is nothing more heavier on the scales on the day of Qiyamah than being a good person Subhanallah. Yes, Salah is going, to be, is going to be weighed first. And being a good person is going to be very heavy on the scale. Because that is part of the Islam. This is part of the surrender. To be good. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us good inshallah. So let us not forget the outward conduct. Let us not forget conduct. Because we... We are more and more living in a society where people are measured by the length of their beards and the size of their turbans. We are more being measured by this type of thing. Outward conduct. And at the same time, we find disunity. At the same time, we find people just destroying the ummah. Sometimes the same people with the long beards and the turbans. Inciting violence. Inciting disunity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Some people, they learn. We go to classes, alhamdulillah. In Cape Town, we are, we are very fortunate with the types and the amount and the volume of knowledge that is at, that is at the disposal of the community. So many learn, and some even master the legal sciences and the rational sciences. And around every corner you find someone who is, has the ability to pick up a debate. Around every corner you find someone who had read something about something that has an intricacy that involves and requires an explanation. But they neglect something which is so intrinsic to Islam. They neglect to examine their outward habits. They neglect to examine their practices. To see whether their habits and their practices, that which they are doing in between, that which they are doing in between, does it confirm to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Does it, does it fall within the realm of the surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So many, unfortunately, are deluded then by their learning. Like you find people who are deluded and who are led astray by thinking they are good people just because they make salah. You find people who think they are good people just because they know something. Just because they can butcha. Just because they are sitting in a class somewhere learning something. They feel sure that they rank high with Allah. They feel sure of themselves. We are busy with learning. We have acquired something. We definitely rank high with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Forgetting that the whole point of knowing 
is not knowing. The whole point of knowing is to apply. Without application, it is useless. Without application, all that knowledge is useless. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا Indeed, he has succeeded. Indeed, the one who had purified it, he had succeeded. The one who had purified it, he had succeeded. Not the one who learns to purify it had succeeded. You are not just required to learn to purify it, you are actually required to purify it. Learning, obviously it has its merits. But it is a means to an end. It is a means to an end. Don't get caught up in the whole drama of the learning process. And don't be deluded that the learning in itself is what is going to give you rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is what you do with what you know. Let me give you an example of types of obedience. Types of obedience. Good acts that is sometimes not even noticed as acts of obedience. Because there's the visible ones that everyone knows that we tend to measure ourselves with and that we tend to measure other people with as well. There's a hadith of Abi Umama al-Bahili radiallahu an qal qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ana za'imu uh, ana za'imun bi baytin fi rab fi rabd al-jannah. The Prophet says, I am a guarantor or I will guarantee a house on the outskirts of Jannah. For who? لِمَنْ تَرَكَ الْمِرَاءَ For the one who leaves off arguing. وَإِنْ كَانَ مُحِقًا Even though he is entitled or justified in his argument to, or to argue. He will get where? He will get a place on the outskirts of Jannah. Sometimes a person ref refuses debate. Sometimes a person says, brother, you, uh, for you, your understanding, and for me, my understanding, and he walks away, and that is not even seen, it's not even merited. He gets nothing, he gets no points. In fact, some people will say, he's a coward. Meanwhile, he's doing the right thing. The Prophet ﷺ continues, وَبِبَيْتٍ فِي وَسْتِ الْجَنَّةِ لِمَنْ تَرَكَ الْكَذِبِ the Prophet guarantees a house in the middle of Jannah. It's one thing to live on the outskirts. It's another thing to live in the middle of Jannah. For who? For the one who leaves off telling lies. Even though it is mazihan. Even though it is just choking or mocking. You know? Even though it is just choking or mocking. A house in the middle of Jannah. See the, see the weight of these seemingly insignificant things. I must not say that I have to 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 say as the 17 is, I have to pay price for it. As the 16 is, I have to go right. All is all 16. So right, man. It's now a safe 400 rand. But it's a good bro. And you're not going to get your place in the middle of Jannah. Because the qualities of a wali, of a person who's close to Allah and who's going to receive the best from Allah, is not lies. Even in situations where you, you would say, ah, so right man, lich man, nah. Not the wali, not the one who is striving. We're not finished. fi a'la al-jannah. Prophet said, I will guarantee a house in the highest of jannah. For what person? Liman hasuna khuluquhu. For the one who beautifies his character. Allahu Akbar. It's in between, my brothers and sisters. It's what happens in between Fajr and Dhuhr. It's what happens in between Jumu'ah and Asr. From happens in between Asr and Maghrib, that's important. You could have made the longest dua, had the most sincerest takbir, said the best taslim, and then you go out there 
And then the first thing you do is you abuse someone, you assault someone, you do something wrong, you cheat someone. In your heart, you carry malice for someone. You are not striving to be a better person. Subhanallah, your Islam is in between. It will bring you on the outskirts, in the middle. It will give you the highest Jannah. The highest Jannah. This is our Islam. So everything... Leaving off an argument, if you can justify it. Leaving off lies. Having good manners. All of these things, it, it hinges upon one thing. It hinges upon me and you straightening out our hearts. Because we can't just decide we want to be better people. We must decide here in this masjid, in this holy waqt of Jumu'ah, we must decide we're going to straighten out our hearts now. Because once we straighten out the heart now, then we can walk out here and we can still be in a state of surrender and Islam. And no one is incapable of straightening out his heart or her heart. Except the one who is insincere. Except the one who is not sincere. I is not interested in all the things that he talks about. This is not my main thing. My main thing is lying out there somewhere. Ek dink eindelijk oor my main ding nou. Die is my secondary ding. So be sincere in your attempt to straighten out your heart. Be sincere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ Nor were they commanded except to worship Allah, to worship Him, sincere to Him in their religion. Sincere. Moet van die hart afkom. Another place in the Quran, فَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصَ That worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity. Your Islam moet van jou hart afkom. We are Muslims from here. From here. Yeah, on the outside also, Allahu Akbar, Samia Allah, Limah, Da'uk, Da'uk. But also is he uk, Muslim. Abu Qasim al-Qushayri, in his famous treatise, he says that sincerity is what? It is to make Allah's, Allah one's sole aim in acts of obedience. To make Allah one's sole aim in acts of obedience. He continues and he says, through obedience, to draw nearer to Allah and, to, and nothing else. Because through obedience, you want to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't want to draw nearer or gain the favor or carry the conviction of anyone or nothing else. You're not worried about acquiring esteem in the eyes of others. You're not worried about praise or you're not loving praise that must come to you. It is nothing else. It is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, be constantly aware of the tricks of shaitan. Lastly for our Jumu'ah, remember this. We can talk about Islam. We can talk about being good Muslims. 24 hours. But be, be very, very, very aware of the tricks of shaitan. And do not consider yourself above the tricks of shaitan. That in itself is a trick of shaitan. That in fact one of his biggest tricks. His biggest trick is to make you believe that you can outwit him and outsmart him. That's one of his biggest tricks. Because that means, if you fall for that trick, it means that everything you do is above board. Isn't it? Because he can't outsmart you. Subhanallah, Allah protect us. Many has lost, even in war, many a general, many a commander has lost the battle because he underestimated his enemy. Don't underestimate your enemy. From this mihrab, many times, the prowess of the enemy had been explained to you. It had, ex it had been explained in detail already from this mihrab how this enemy works and to the extent of this enemy's sophistication. So let us not underestimate our enemy. Even now, even now like I'm standing here, a trick of shaitan can be that this khatib, this person speaking here, that he believes that because he has spoken all these things, 
that he has the that he has acquired these things. That was a trick. Because I'm speaking about it, now Satan can make me believe you got it. No, 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 no. Prat is in ng bro. Doing is something else. You mustn't just talk the talk. You have to walk the talk. Not only that, Satan is trying to busy to trick you as well. <laughs> Maybe because you are hearing these things, you are believing. Ik het nogal amal day. Ik is nogal net so. Kwaai maulana, sê vir hulle. Sê vir hulle maulana, hulle makia die. Inna lillahi. No. No. Ik makia die. It's, 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 it's actually me. So, see, so the tricking shaitan doesn't even wait till you go out by the masjid. He doesn't wait. It's close to you. Close. It starts here. No, no, no. For me, the advice is, Allah protect us. A'udhu billahi min shaitan al-rajim. May Allah protect me and you. That although we have spoken this, although we have heard this, we all understand that when we put our foot out here, when this talk is finished, then the thing only starts. It only starts outside. For me and for you. And then the other thing, last thing, before we end. Remember. Remember your beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember him. And think of him often. And send salutations upon him often. Because the salutations that you send upon him is for your own benefit. Even if you send salutations upon him, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send ten upon you. Subhanallah. You are not even doing the Prophet a favor, you're doing yourself a favor. Just by remembering him. Just by saluting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Make the Prophet beloved to you. Make him beloved to you. When we say his name, Muhammad say, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you at every opportunity try to find out, what did he do? How was he? What did he do in this situation? What did he... Love him. Love him. Make him your best friend. And make him your master. And make him the one that you want to emulate. Make his character the one that, that you want to imbibe. Make his understanding of deen. Try to understand how he understood and how he thought about things. And try to make that understanding yours. And inshallah through this we will be completely in a state of surrender and Islam. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Shukran.